Hi everybody, it's Leslie from Discovery Fabrics and by popular request we're going to do a tutorial on how to get warmth when you're making mittens or outerwear. We're using mittens as an example because it just does give you a really good idea of how to layer many fabrics together to get the warmth factor that you need for both where you live and the activity that you're doing. Obviously, if you're living in a cold area and you're skiing and using a lot of energy, you're going to not require something that's as insulating as when you're standing around. So there are two ways that you can get insulation. One is through loft, so think down or feathers. And what happens when you have loft is you're trapping air and air adds a level of, of insulation that just increases the warmth factor. And the other way that you can get warmth is through density. So think of felt soles for your boots. So there's a couple of different things that we do when we're making mittens. And sometimes we're restricted in the density because dense fabrics are usually quite stiff. And so if you're trying to get your thumb into uh, a mitten, thumb space, whatever that is called, and it's too thick, you're not gonna be able to manipulate your hands very well. So I'm going to show you an example of a dense fabric. It's actually very heavy. This is Polar Tech 300. You can see it, it, it looks very, very thick and dense. And this is a really warm fabric. It has very little stretch to it, well, has no stretch to it. So this makes a great uh, poncho or jacket, or, you know, if you wanted to make a pair of slippers or really warm boots, you could definitely use this because you don't have to have such tiny areas and you don't need that flexibility. So that's a dense fabric example. And now we're going to talk about loft. So I have a couple of different fabrics here. In fact, I'm going to just grab one more fabric. The first one I'm going to show you is called Polar Tech Power Fill. Power Fill is a, a, a wonderful insulation. Uh, the reason why it insulates so well is because it is hollow, the little fibers are hollow, so they're trapping air in their hollow spaces, and air also can trap around those fibers. So that's a great insulation. And this particular one that I'm showing you is quite a lightweight one. Uh, we are actually getting a heavier one in, but it really doesn't matter because if you have a lightweight one and you wanna add more loft, you just double it or triple it or whatever you need to do to get the amount of warmth that you require. So power fill is a sandwich fabric. So it's the insulation between the outer layer. Now we'll discuss outer layers in a moment and the inner layer that's going to give you comfort because you don't want to have power fill next to your skin. Um, the second fabric I'm going to show you was actually created by Polar Tech for the military and it is called Alpha. <clears throat> now Alpha is considered to be an active insulation. So what the reason they created it for the military troops in Afghanistan is they would be wearing jackets in the mountains and carrying very heavy packs and exerting a lot of energy. So they would basically um, overheat if they had a very warm, say a down filled jacket. So Alpha allows excess heat to escape from the body, but still leaves you with enough heat to be comfortable given that you are very active. So if you were standing around um, and only had an alpha jacket on, you probably would be chilly where you wouldn't be if you had a power fill. Um, and then the other thing about alpha is when those troops stopped, they were able to stay warm for a short period of time with the alpha. So there's two types of alpha. There's alpha and there's alpha direct. And it's very hard to tell the difference between the two of them. Um, but Polar Tech tells me that they created Alpha Direct to go directly against the skin as opposed to Alpha, which is a sandwich fabric like Power Fill. It's got to have a liner and it's got to have uh, a face fabric because people really loved this and they wanted to use it just as a liner. And they were, but it didn't maintain its, um, its look. It wasn't as durable so they made Alpha Direct basically the same kind of fabric, but it's just a more durable form and can be used as just a liner. So it gives you kind of insulation and lining all in one. Um, having said that, I have used Alpha myself in gloves just by itself. I didn't actually have enough of the Alpha Direct 
and it was fine. I mean, I don't care what the inside of my glove looks like, and it actually wore pretty well. So in a pinch, you definitely can use Alpha as just a liner, uh, but Alpha Direct is, is better. And the other thing I wanted to show you, this is actually um, not an insulating fab fabric in itself. This is uh, a Polar Tech fabric called um, Thermal Pro. And this is a high loft version. This actually came from Patagonia. They used this particular style to make uh, the retool hoodie. You can actually uh, Google that and see some fantastic jackets, pullovers, um, whatnot that they use with this fabric. It's considered to be extreme warmth because it has such loft for a fleece. It makes a fantastic pullover, obviously. But why I wanted to show it to you is that you sometimes, if you're buying this and you're making yourself a jacket or house coat or whatever you want in extreme warmth, you can use your scraps to insulate for when you're making gloves. So you can also you can always make the best use of this. You don't throw away small pieces just because you can't make a garment out of it. So that's why I wanted to show you Thermal Pro. So we've talked about the warmth factor in loft and the warmth factor in uh, dense fabrics. So now let's talk about how you would put those together. Now the outer fabric that you choose is going to be based on whether you need it to be water repellent or not, or highly water repellent or not. So if you um, have kids that are playing in really wet snow, you're going to want something that's super water repellent. 